In this video we're going to talk about all the different varieties of hydrangeas and how to plant them and care for them for the homeowners and commercial use. So these flowers are hydrangeas. So what's so special about this is the Endless Summer series. What's so special about these ones? Well, hydrangea are one of the longest flowering ones in our area. They flower from early summer right through until the fall. And with the newer varieties, the colored ones, and some of the uh, enhancements they've made, the, the selection is the best that we've ever seen. And the, it's very, this is a pretty hardy plant for this area. The, the colored ones will generally winter well. You should give them some winter protection at first, you know, mulch the base and put a wind protection up because they, their, their blossoms, a lot of them set their buds in the fall and they have to winter those buds. Yeah. And sometimes people will have a beautiful plant but not get the flower they like. So you have to protect them from the winter winds. So. Yeah, the, yeah, the extreme cold part of the winter. And it's a wind break and, uh, and uh, a mulch around the base. and. Yeah. Uh, they thrive with a acidic soil, Okay. so you can create that acidic soil by using uh, uh, mulch around the, uh, you know, bark chips tend to make that the acidity that we're looking for. And what kind of fertilizer works best with these? Well, there's specific fertilizers for, you know, for rhododendron and azaleas, the acid lovers, you know, so you can use that type, or you can use like a, a good compost. <clears throat> Some of the composted uh, cow or sheep manures, you know, will give them the, uh, the, the root system we're looking for. Yeah. And does the blue or the pink need like more acidic soils or anything like for colors or? Usually the pH changes the color, makes it more intense. Mm -hmm. So by having a really good, uh, uh, you know, uh, acidic combination with a good fertilizer, that's where you'll get your most vibrant color. Okay. And was it best to do like a granular for? fertilizer or water soluble that you water on? <clears throat> the water th soluble for plants works well but you have to be the person that remembers to do it regularly yeah. because it doesn't last so some of the yeah. granular fertilizers you put them on once a season or twice a season and they're you know they're a little less effort to remember <laughs> yeah. yeah you know to 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 feed the measure one go. time works better for the people that don't want to be out there doing that every once yeah, a week yeah. And when you first plant these, you have to be really careful about watering them in, right? Yes, and they tell you right away if they're not if they're not getting enough moisture because the blooms start to collapse. So you really should keep an eye on them at first. You know, water them maybe two or three times a week quite thoroughly. They don't want to stand in water, but they they want to have a, a good moisture level until the root system spread enough to uh, to to carry them through the dry part. Yeah. And these hydrangea, they have like really vibrant, showy colors. So what, what is it that makes these, these flowers so showy and vibrant? There's so many here. It's a, it's a large flower. And if we look at, at um, the plant beside you, you can see the buds just starting to form. And the color comes up as the flower gets more mature. Then you get to a point where you get a, a spectacular, you know, blossom like the one you're holding in your hand. That that you know are really a, a real size. I think that's one of their one of their most interesting parts is the fact that they do have such big blossoms. These ones are a little bit young yet. They're going to get a lot larger and showier. So. And, and when soil conditions, some years you'll have much larger flowers, you know, than than you would when you first plant them. Yeah. And, and I wouldn't, you know, necessarily steer people away from the old-fashioned ones. The older varieties like Annabelle and PG, which are sort of uh, predecessors for some of these, have have uh, newer, ver you know, newer strains in them that have more color than they ever had before. Yeah. They start off green, change to a white, and then, you know, fade into a pink or a mauve or, you know. And some are different shape flowers too, right? You can get yeah, cones and right. big balls. The tree tree forms are often are cone shaped and you can choose a height from you know anywhere from you know uh, three feet or a meter up to uh, you know uh, a meter and a half maybe even There's up to even ten There's even some feet. green ones the chartreuse color. The yeah lime. yeah limelight and yeah. limelight comes in a dwarf as well as a you know a larger size one really yeah. really uh, striking and they change at the end of their season to give you color yeah. so you get a pink or a purple shade coming into the bloom. So something the all the way through because yeah, you get something Yeah that's right the change yeah. through the season. 
Yeah. And you can get standard types as well, right? The, yes, the uh, we do have the tree form where you have a single trunk and you can plant something low around the base and they'll make a beautiful large plant, you know, yeah. that uh, um, you can get limelight and, uh, you know, and PG and, and several of the, of the cone-shaped ones, uh, Invincible, Phantom, Incredible. The okay. number of varieties now are just, uh, you know, it's, there's a lot of them out there now yeah. to choose from. And if I was going to do pruning on these, when would I do pruning? You have to be a bit careful with the colored ones because a lot of those form their buds in the, in the previous season. So you don't just cut them without knowing the variety, you know, so check your variety out online and see which ones would be best pruned in the fall. Um, and some of the old fashioned ones like the Annabelle, they spread from the base, They're, you know, it's like buying a large perennial. Mm -hmm. So they, you can cut them down severely periodically just to thicken the amount of uh, the stems and the thickness of the growth. Okay. Here in the nursery, I don't want to show you any <laughs> pests or disease, we wouldn't have that. But no. uh, it, it, they, there is a leaf roller that bothers hydrangea and it, it forms a, a sort of a cup and protects the insect inside. So those are best physically removed or you can just tear them open, you know, to get rid of the insect and uh, try to get rid of the insect so he doesn't multiply and you know cause you problems for years to come <clears throat> but beyond that they don't have a lot of uh, a lot of, of problems with uh, you know with other insects they're they're uh, they're um, you there's know. no um, I don't think I've ever seen like any type of mold or fungus on these they don't seem prone to anything they don't, like they don't, that. They're not prone no some plants have a lot more trouble with our high humidities but the hydrangea like the humidity to keep them firm. If you have the choice in planting spot some place that doesn't get as much of the heat of the day the blooms will last longer so you can have a morning sun situation they they really thrive on that a half a day sun. And when and why would somebody want to purchase a hydrangea? Well, they can be planted throughout the summer, so time-wise it's any time that you have the time to work in your garden. And the reason that most people want to grow them is for the long-lasting flowers. They, they flower right through the summer and actually make a dried flower, you know, so they're, they're really... And they're a great pollinator too for yeah, birds so as we and bees. We we just, there's bee bees just on them all the time. Annabelle hydrangea, this is just budded stage now, but uh, a lot of the growth with an Annabelle comes right from the ground. So, you know, periodically some people might cut them down extremely low. Not that the old branches won't come back, but it'll just make the, the wood a little heavier, you know, and it'll hold its, uh, it'll hold its own a bit, a bit better. This is, um, this is one of our suppliers that has a, uh, a hand-picked program, which is uh, just some of the select plants that we purchase from them. And uh, it's, it's a real showpiece. And, it's very hardy, zone two, and, and you know, you could plant it in a really exposed flat and expect it to do very well. So if you want to learn more, Jen. So you just go to scottsnursery.tv for more upcoming series and information on different plant material. Mm -hmm.